And now, tonight's presentation of radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Tonight, the transcribed story of what happens when a trunk is bought at auction, contents unknown. We call it Going, Going, Gone. So now, starring Tom Brown and Eve McVeigh, here is tonight's suspense play, Going, Going, Gone. Oh. Wally, uh, Wally, look! A trunk, a trunk, ladies and gentlemen, a trunk. Contents unknown. Thank you, boys. An old trunk, ladies and gentlemen, from the estate of Mrs. Dexter Jocelyn. Since Mr. Jocelyn's unfortunate disappearance last week, Listen. the executives have found a letter left by Mr. Jocelyn. Requesting us to sell his bill. Wally. Hmm? Yes, sir. I'm going to bid on it. Oh, now, Jan, please be sensible. We already bought a lamp, two chairs, another original Venus de Milo statue. What do we want with a trunk? I won't go over $10, Wally. $10, Wally. I should oh, say. Oh, please, honey, he's got such lovely old stains. Please, it might be very valuable. Three, two, one. I hear one. I hear one who'll make it two. Uh, $2. Thank you, Master. Two dollars. Two dollars. It's no. only two dollars. Do I hear three? Three, do I hear three? Two fifty. Two fifty. Three? Three dollars here, Mr. Martin. Three, 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 do I hear more? Three going once, <laughs> three going twice, going for the third and last time at three. Sold the lady for three dollars. <laughs> oh. Wally, I got it. No, wait, wait. Ah, I'll raise the bid. One hundred. I'll give one hundred dollars. Sorry, friend, you're too late. No, but I must have the trunk. Two hundred dollars. Sorry, friend, it's been sold to this lady for three dollars. Come on, dear. Let's go back and pick up our things. <laughs> yes, uh, that's ours. And the statue, too. And the trunk. Right here, lady. No. No, that's not the same one. It's newer. It's the same one, lady. No. The one you sold me was lovely and old. That's right. The one you sold my wife had stains on it, mm -hmm. and we want the one with the stains. That's right. I want the one I bought. But I tell you, lady, we used the old one for a come on. Now, take this. It'll make you happy. No, we want the one you sold us. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay, sure. I'll get it. I'll be right back. Okay, boys, drag out the old one. Yeah, that's the one. Oh, Jan, sometimes I wonder about you. Oh, you do, huh? <laughs> well, let me tell you something. That old trunk's got something in it. I know. You know. <laughs> well, what about that funny little man who came in late and bid $200? Uh, you know, I'll bet he made them offer us that other trunk just now. Honey, that's just part of the act. Mm. They want to make people figure it's valuable. <laughs> Next Sunday, they'll have 50 old trunks to sell. All right. <laughs> you wait. You'll see. You just wait. <laughs> We got our old trunk, paid for it, and caught it at home. Sat in the middle of the living room. Big, old, and dirty, with a lot of funny-looking stains. Jan was like a kid with a new doll. What do you think's in it, Wal? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it could be anything, couldn't it? Yeah, sure, sure anything. It's, it's kind of like Christmas, you know? Well, honey, are we going to stand here and talk about it? Let's open it and get it over with. No, wait. Not for a minute. I just want to look. Why do you suppose that little man wanted it so badly? It can't be the same as the other trunks they've got. Oh, Jan, I thought you had more sense. Do you honestly think they'd sell us something for $3 if they didn't open it first to find out what was in it? Mm. Oh, it's heavy. Sure. Filled with old clothes, roller skates, blood instruments, and, uh, well, that's it. Well, hmm? guess what's in it. Guess? Oh, come on, Jan. Now, come on, let's open it. Huh? First, we'll guess what's in it. You guess first. All right, let's see now. The old trunk, pretty big. A lot of peculiar stains. And, hmm, big enough to put a... Oh, come on. Come on, let's open it. Wait, we'll, we'll open it together. All right. Oh, the catch is stuck. All right, I all right. Can't... Here, I'll do it. Now, stand back. <laughs> well, 
Well, go on, open it, it's yours. Hmm? Well, doesn't it scare you? Just a little bit? Scare me? Huh. There. Now, are you satisfied? Wally, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, now look at that. Nothing but a mess of old rags and paper. Three dumbs. Three hard-earned dollars for a pile of newspapers and... Hey. Wally. Hey. Oh, oh wow, well, look. Diamonds. Hey. Gold. Rubies. Wow. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a fake. It, it must be. Oh, these aren't uh, real. They, they, they look real, but... Uh, yeah, but there's nothing to be scared about anymore. It's not real, none of it. I don't know. Oh, now, look, look, be sensible. If this stuff were the real thing, I mean, diamonds, pearls, emeralds, and all, it, well, it'd be worth millions. It looks real. I mean it. A woman has a feeling about jewelry. She can tell. <laughs> jewelry? Here, look. Did you ever see a diamond ring this big? Well, no, I never all did. All right. But... All right, now, once and for all, I'll prove it to you. You think this is a diamond ring, huh? Yes, Wally, I think it is. This is a diamond? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's a diamond ring? Okay. Now watch. Diamonds cut glass, right? Right. Okay. I'm going to scratch it on the window, and maybe this will satisfy you. Okay. Ah, uh, there's your fake diamond. Now, for heaven's sake, you... I told you. I told you they're real. We bought a trunk full of jewels. Yeah. What are we going to do with it? I don't know. I want to think. Maybe we should call the police. Oh, no, no, no. Why well, should we... I mean, we... supposing it's all stolen jewels. Hey. Hey, the door. Someone's at the door. Now, come on, come on. Get the rags and papers back in the trunk. We'll put it in the bedroom. Yeah, well, it's probably only Mother. Yeah, or the guy from the auction. Now, come on, hurry. All right. All right, now you push and I'll pull. Well, well I feel as if we've done something... Oh, we gotta be careful. Eh? There. Now shut the door. Now, if it is your mother, don't say anything, please. All right. Oh, how do you do? My name is Mr. Minchi. Yes? You are Mr. Pindale? Yeah, that's right. You uh, uh, bought a trunk this afternoon at the auction. You see, I arrived too late to buy it myself. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, too bad, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Pindale, I will give you $200 for it. Uh, sentimental value, you understand. I'm sorry. What, would you mind getting your foot out of the door? Ah, uh, you, you, you have opened the trunk. Oh, yes. Uh, oh, uh, $50,000, then. You must be a very sentimental man. 100000 Mr. Pendell, my last offer. We needed a trunk. Good evening. I, I must warn you, the consequences will be upon your own head. Now, this is your last chance. Think carefully. Good evening. Oh, Mr. Pendell, you're making a mistake. Please, please, I beg you, please take my offer. I heard it, Wally. What are we going to do? I don't know. It was, it was that same little fellow. Oh, he's still there. Well, I'm scared. Well, he's quite old and not very big. I'll take care of no, him. No, no, don't do that. Call the police. Oh, no, Jan, I mean there's... it. He might have a gun. Jan, there's... Please. Well, all right, maybe I'd better. Well, I never thought hello. I'd see uh, the day, well, but... Hello. Hello. Oh, uh, yes. Do you uh, mind getting on? I I'm sorry. What's the matter? Party line. What does that woman talk about all day? Well, you'd better drive down to the police station. Oh, wait a minute. Maybe he's gone. It's all right, honey. Nobody's there. What are we going to do? All about what? We bought the trunk. What's in its it eyes? It isn't right, Wally. We'll get into trouble. What? That man at the door, he might be a gangster, huh. a foreign jewel thief. Suppose he's got other men with him. Uh, I I'll try the police again. Chester, Hello. is the only I... stuffing I use. Uh, of course, some people like oysters, Hello. but I also... Hello. Will you please hang 
Now, yeah, but lady, look, lady, this oh, is an emergency. Lady, you don't. Lady, I'm trying to call the oh, police. Any excuse, the it isn't an excuse. What was I I'm trying. Oh, yes, oyster stuffing. I, well. She won't get off. Well, she's got to. Here, let me try. Oh, no, no, no. Now, wait, maybe, maybe it's fate. fate. Maybe we're not supposed to. It's... You listen to me, Wally. Now, I don't see why you're making such a fuss. We're safe enough. I'm not afraid of... Wally. I heard it. Don't you dare go. What do you want me to do? I don't know, but... Oh, I mean, maybe it's your mother this time, well... huh? Uh... <clears throat> Who is it? Oh. I'll scream out the window for help. No, no, you can't do that. What will the neighbors think? I'm going. Wally, you be careful. Here, take the poker. Okay. Now, you stay where you are. Wally, please don't open it's it. It's all right. Now, you just stay there. No. Okay. I've had enough of this. Oh. Oh. listening to Going, Going, Gone. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. You are the Red Cross. If you're not serving, then it's your neighbors. When the Red Cross blood program helps you, when relief and rehabilitation move in efficiently after disaster, it's a people-to-people -people program in operation not a disembodied machine that works by flicking a switch. Today, the Red Cross needs not just your donation, but you, as an active member. Take your contribution to your local chapter, and while you're there, join so you can serve. 30 million new members are needed now. And now we bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Tom Brown and Eve McVeigh, starring in tonight's production, Going, Going, Gone, a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. Wally, what's uh, wrong with him? Uh, Make him get up. The door. The door. Yes. Oh, yes. What happened? Are you hurt? I don't know. Been close to me. I, I've, I've got to tell you. Yes, You've sure. got to do something. No, no time, no time. They caught me as I was coming back up here. They'll get you too. Who? Oh. Who? Oh. Oh, I don't get it. They are waiting outside. Later in the night, they will come. The killers. The killers? Oh, oh, who are they? Uh, the jewels. Where are they? In the trunk. We put him in the bedroom. We can't let him die there. No. Call the police, Wally. A doctor or something. Save yourselves. Get out of this house. Get out. Wally? I guess so. Oh, I'm scared, Wally. What are we going to do? Well, now, 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 take it easy, honey. Nobody's going to hurt you. I... Hello. 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 Hello, for Pete's sake. What's the matter? Oh, is that... She left her phone off the hook just for spite. She's left it off. Oh. Well, I gotta think now. Couldn't I scream out the window for help? Oh, sure. Sure, if they're waiting out there, you get killed just like him. Um. Oh, no. I gotta think. Wait a minute. Put out the light. I, I'm gonna peek out. You stay behind the curtain, Wally. Right. Don't let him see you. It was getting misty. I couldn't see the end of the street, but near the lamppost a couple of houses down, I saw a black car, big and long. In our street, there's only two houses, mine and a neighbor who wasn't home. And I'd never seen that car before. I thought of what was in the trunk and what was lying right outside of the front door. Man doesn't like to show it, but as I looked out, I was scared. Can you see them? No, oh, but there's a car down there. You must be in it. Come away. No. no, no, wait a minute. What? Oh, stay back. I can see lights coming around the corner. It's 
slowing down. It's Mr. Fling. Mr. Fling? He won't do any good. He always comes home drunk on Sundays. Well, I'm, I'm going to open the window and yell anyway. Now, you get down on the floor. They may start shooting. Oh, Wally. Mr. Fling! Hey! Hey, Mr. Fling! Mr. Fling! Uh, why? Why, me, why me, don't you uh, shut up? Uh, no, no, Mr. Up Fling! It's Pindell, yeah. Wally Pindell. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hi. yeah well, we're in trouble, Mr. Hi, Fling. Pindell. You've Hi. got to call the police. Hi. Tell them to get over here in a hurry. Oh, sure. Now, okay. And you get in your house quick. You're in danger, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Thank yeah. Thank you. Oh, he must be sober tonight. He's going to do it. Oh, gee. If the police <laughs> can just get here in time. You know, it's funny. They... They didn't try anything. What What are we going to do with him? Mr. Minch, mm -hmm. I don't know. Better put him in a bedroom, I guess. On our bed? Oh, honey, he's dead, poor guy. You stay here, I'll, I'll carry him in. All right. I carried him into the bedroom and laid him down. I never touched a dead man before, and I'd always thought they'd be cold. He wasn't, not yet. And the doorbell rang. It's, it's them. Shh. Stay with me. Uh, yeah? Uh, hi, hi, pal. Hi, hi, pal. Oh, Mr. Fling. Hi, Anybody with you? Oh, what do you got? You huh? Got a party? Oh, no. Hey, you want I should get, get a friend? No, oh, yeah, go, no, no. Go come on in. Friend. Come in, quick. Uh, don't push down. No, 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 oh, look, I told you, you to call the police. The oh, police? Yes. I thought you said, come on up and oh, have a drink. No. What's the matter? Jan. Somebody, somebody Jan. dead? Jan, <laughs> Jan go, go, go make some coffee. Oh, honey. Uh, go make yes, coffee, yes, something, yes, anything. Yes. Now, look, are you sober enough to listen? Wait a minute, who's sober? For the... who's... Look, look, we've yeah. got to get the police. Well, I got to go a raid, huh? Well, uh, let me out of guy get out of here. Now, now, look, some men are outside there trying to kill us all. They've already killed one man. Oh, yeah. Who? Who? Oh, it doesn't Whoa. matter. Look, we can't use our phone. We've got to get to another no, one. Oh no, no! I know we... these wild parties. You get on Mr. my Fl phone and you call some dame in oh. Paris. Oh, yes. if you weren't oh, drunk, no. I'd put. No, no, no. Come on, uh, hey. come on. Hey, that hurts. Hey, that hurts. Come on. Hey, hey. no. Jan, what? What, Wally? Oh, he's no help. I'm going to make a run for but it. But you can't go outside. They'll shoot Now, look, shoot we're him. not yeah, going to stay time. here. Hey, hey, where, where's that drink? Wait a minute. Huh? Wait. I'm going to take a look out the window again. Okay. Okay, I, I'm going to bed. The curse Some to live. party here. I can't see if anyone's in it. Oh, good evening, sir. No, uh, no, don't get up. Don't get up. Got to take the chance. Well, where are you going? Well, it's no good trying to get to Fling's house. They'd see us. I'll try the back way. Now, if I can get to the garage, I might be able to make it to the police in the car. What about him? Oh. I don't want to stay here alone with him. Okay, okay, come with me. We went out the back door. Everything was quiet. Even quieter than usual because of the fog. I knew that we couldn't be seen from the street, and if we were quiet, maybe... <laughs> He must have heard the noise. What if they... Now, look, when we drive out of the garage, you duck down. Mm -hmm. If they try to stop us, well, I'll run them down. I'll get in. Now, go on. Oh, oh it's so loud. Shh. Ah! It's all right. It's all right. It's only a backfire. Hold on. <laughs> Now get your guns out, boys. Mr. Pendell, where's the black car? Why, it was right over there, across the street. Hey, maybe they... Jan, you stay here. Looks bad. The door's open. You wait, Mr. Pendell. We'll go on first. You two guys watch the back. Okay, Sarge. Mr. Pendell. Yeah. This the body? No, that's Mr. Fling. Where's Mr. Munchie? He's gone. They took him away. But the trunk's here. Look. Yeah. The jewels. 
They're not here. Oh, uh, Mr. Menchie, he was here. Oh, listen, don't look at me like that. I tell you, there was a trunk full of jewels, and Mr. Menchie, he was... Uh, uh, oh, Jan! Jan, Jan, come on in and tell him, Jan! <laughs> That was about it. Same trunk was there, empty. There wasn't a mark on the bed, and the dead body was gone. We managed to wake up Mr. Fling, but he couldn't remember anything except that he wanted a drink. Police were pretty mad, but I guess Jan convinced them that we hadn't been kidding. Anyway, we gave him coffee, and that was that. Well, there wasn't much more to it, except that about two months later, Jan and I were having breakfast on Saturday when the mail came. Honey, we know anybody in Mexico? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. More coffee? Yeah, yeah. Hey, look, it's from Mexico. I know, dear, you said so. Mr. and Mrs. Wallace Pendel. <laughs> Who's it from, dear? Huh? Hey, Jan, there's some money in it. Two $100 bills. Well, let me see. Well, what does the letter say? Dear folks, I'm sorry for the inconvenience I caused you. But it was my trunk and my jewels, and I had to get it back. So I know you'll excuse the little trick I played on you. Just before my disappearance, I put all our jewelry in the trunk and by letter ordered the sealed trunk to be sold at auction. But I got caught in the traffic, and you got it away from me and closed as a token of my appreciation. Sincerely, Dexter Joslin, alias Anatole Minchie. Minchie? We better call the police. Why? Well, all those jewels. Well, he says right here that. Well, is. I know. Now but... let's just forget the whole thing. Pretend it never happened. But every once in a while, we are reminded of it. There's a diamond ring about as big as a half dollar. I'd put it in my pocket after I cut the glass out of our window. Jan used to wear it to parties. Not anymore. She thinks it looks too much like a fake. Suspense, in which Tom Brown and Eve McVeigh starred in tonight's transcribed presentation of Going, Going, Gone. Be sure to listen next week to Suspense. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.